Welcome to Learning Lua. In today's tutorial, we're going to look at data structures, specifically the table. Lua utilizes tables to represent data structures that includes arrays, records, lists, queues, sets, basically any type of data structure in other languages is represented with the Lua table. Most commonly, we're used to working with arrays, or that's at least the very first introduction that we see in programming is how to use arrays in our programming language. Generally an array is a sequence of numbers or uh, whether that be integers or floating numbers that are a sequence or a series that need to be recorded for some purpose. They could also might also include string arrays but generally it is of the same type. Tables do not have that limitation. We can utilize a mixed table that can include strings, numbers, uh, integers, floating point numbers, whatever the case might be, as well as links, uh, functions. Tables are incredibly versatile and powerful in the Lua programming language. In Lua, it is customary to start your table with an index of 1. Not using an index of 1 is possible. However, it does invalidate the pound sign, which is frequently used to determine the number of elements stored in the table. Values can be assigned in a Lua table or an array by using a single expression. As you can see in the example I have here, we've created a, a local variable called binary that is storing a binary sequence from 1 to 256. A table or array can also be initialized internally. In this particular example, I've created a variable called number, initialized it as an array or table, and then used a for loop to assign each element of this array the value of zero. And as you can see with my print statement, we then output the results without any incident. If you wanted to see what the particular index number for each one, there you can see we've assigned each one its corresponding number. Tables can also store multi-dimensional or matrices. Multi-dimensional tables are very useful. You normally will need to initialize each row of the array or table as a further as an array. So you're actually storing an array within an array or a table within a table. So in this case we've initialized matrix as an, a table creating 10. We're going to create 10 rows then the matrix of i, or each of the rows, will also be initialized as a table, and within that we will store the value of 0. So we are creating a matrix of 10 by 10. The table library is very useful. These are built-in elements inside the table that allow us to return information or perform certain functions easily. The most common is the pound, which returns the size of the array or the size of the table, assuming that you started with a count of 1. The table insert allows you to insert an element at a given position or at the end of the array if the position is not provided. Table.remove removes an element from the given position of the table or the last element of the table if a position is not given. And then table sort will sort the table by default it uses the less than operator or ascending. And here's an example of using the insert. I've created a variable called list and inserted some random numbers to it. We're going to insert into the table list at the second position the value of 8. The sequence is the, table, the name of the table, the location for your insert, and then the value that you wish to insert. This can be done with strings, integers, Anything that you want to insert can be inserted with this fashion. And as you can see, we're printing out the new list, which has inserted the value of 8 at the second position. Again, we can see our position real easy and see what's happening there. With the remove, I'm going through and removing that element that we just inserted, the value of 8, which was in our second position. And again, we can see the index number as part of that and see the resulting list. If you want to sort your list, you can use the table.sort and provide the name of the table that you want to 
sort and it will automatically sort it for ascending. In this case you can see that it has output my information in ascending order from that original list. You can also pass it descending to change the sequence of your sort, but by default it is ascending. We have a lot more tutorials and lessons forthcoming. If you'd like to follow what's happening, you can follow us on Twitter at Dr. Brian Burton or Facebook at Burton's Media Group or follow us on our website, burtonsmediagroup.com. If you'd like notification through YouTube, hit the like or subscribe button. 